Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Whiskey Twin Cylinder, which was a submarine that had to launch missiles from the surface, and the weapon that was basically designed for the purposes of destroying it, the wonderful Harpoon Missile. So the idea of this is uh, kind of interesting really, it was uh, something I was experimenting with earlier, and I'm like, oh, let's see if it actually works the way I expect it. So our scenario here is that we have a lovely uh, PL-644 there, that's one of those lovely uh, Twin Cylinder whiskeys that actually has an air to crown missile on board, a ballistic missile submarine that I'll unfortunately have to surface to use. So the opposition here, of course, consists of our lovely Oliver Howard to the Perry, because reasons. And yes, I know we've got a mismatch of years, but too bad. And of course, we have an SH-2F, which is kind of helping us out a little bit as far as identifying the target. Now, the first thing I want to do here is I want to make sure that my Oliver Hazard Perry is ready to fire a harpoon. <laughs> fire the harpoon <laughs> instead of fire the missiles, I guess. So one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go check to make sure it's ready to go. And one of the things I notice is if you look, you'll see that the Room 66A is basically chilling. Oh my god, the SM1 ancient. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click the switch here, and that's going to tell it to pretty much get those harpoons up on deck there so they're ready to fire. Now the interesting thing about the Oliver Hazard Perry, if you haven't seen it before, is you got this little missile launcher kind of chilling on the front. That's an auto loader. It's actually pretty cool. It goes vertical. The missile comes out of this little magazine that locks onto it, and it's pretty much ready to fire right on the nose. So um, we're not going to have an issue as far as rate of fire goes. The real issue is... Is the harpoon going to kill the sub before it is able to launch its weapons against the shore? And that's where it gets interesting. So let's go ahead and grab our guy here. That looks pretty good. He's minus 249.3 feet. I'm going to press F1. I'm going to go ahead and click on my shore target. When I unpause, a couple things are going to happen. You're going to see he's going to dip down a little bit because he's on manual mode. Let's go switch him off to on regular mode here. And what you'll see is our submarine is actually going to start making its way towards the surface here. Now, I think it's an amazing thing that you can put a ballistic missile on a submarine. I think it's an equally amazing thing that somebody thought it would be cool to actually try to basically shoot these things off the deck. You know, as you could probably see from the little picture that we saw earlier, I mean, it's like literally just sort of hanging out on the deck there. So this thing's going to come up to the surface. It's going to be all sorts of obnoxious. It is nighttime, of course, and of course it is, um, you know, not the best weather for these kinds of things. And of course, if I don't send this guy to the surface, I'm going to stop saying, of course, ha ha. So this guy's going to head up to the surface here and he's going to get ready. You can hear a little bit better. The cool thing here is now that when the periscope comes out, you actually can see it creates a very small wake just to let everybody know that the periscope is, um, periscope is uh, going ahead and uh, creating a little feather there. Now, the interesting thing is if I switch over to the Americans real quick here, you will see that I did not detect until just now, in which case uh, my goblin here has been spotted. Let's assume this crow has perfect reaction time for this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on him there. You can see we have some lightweight target mods there. Uh, F1, uh, we have assumed he's a subsurface target. We don't recognize him as a surface target yet, uh, which is a problem. So if I press Control F1 and click on him, you'll notice I can go ahead and pop off a harpoon immediately. I'll fought fire one a little bit short, and I'll fire one basically right on his head. Now keep in mind, this is a lawless targeting. Uh, this took milliseconds between me spotting the sub and being ready to fire. So he's going to get up to the surface here, and he's going to immediately fire his payload. I'm pretty confident in the real world you could not fire off your payload quite that fast. I would be very, 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 very impressed if a crew could get that thing completely dried off, the crew on the surface of the vessel, and firing it all at the same time. Like I said, that's pretty darn impressive. It's actually really cool to see what this thing looks like kind of in action. Just one of those little details that people don't realize. So I'm going to go ahead and fire the other one off too, because, you know, why not? I've got two. Might as well use both. And of course, our harpoons will probably be on the way. So if I swing over to the side here, and you can see the two harpoons have been launched. Uh, they're ripping across very, very aggressively through the water, or actually above the water because they're harpoon missiles. You can see they're about 180 feet, 570 knots, and they're making some pretty good time here. One of the things I appreciate the fact is that we've got a better look at that goblin. In the real world, of course, what I would do is I'd go send a sea sprite to go take a better look at him kind of a thing, try to figure out what's going on. You know, is it a hostile sub or something like that? But the reality is this submarine at any time may submerge. It does not need to data link these weapons. If it wanted to go diving down right now, it could. But of course, uh, we have not detected the incoming harpoon missiles, so theoretically, uh, we're getting away with this clean. Of course, in the real world, uh, the moment you detect the fact there's an SH-2 looking at you, you'd probably get a little suspicious. So again, our missiles were launched at about 9.31 and 30, and uh, you can see the harpoons are just kind of doing their thing. They're ripping across there at any point. And keep in mind that submarine at any point could have went ahead and submerged, and he would be perfectly fine. But like I said, this is science, so we got to have a little bit of fun here. Let's see, our harpoons are getting there. Again, this is almost four and a half minutes later, and I think our harpoons are going to go clean past, which is a little disappointing there. Let's switch to the other team real fast. And you can see, um, I think none of the harpoons are actually going to strike our target here. Oh, one, one did. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh what a hit. So you can see our harpoon speared its goblin, kind of a thing like that. 
Now, the fun thing here is you notice that our weapons still got to the target. Obviously, if we had a little bit more of a delay between surfacing and firing, I'm pretty sure they couldn't do it in less than 10 minutes, in which case the harpoon would have achieved exactly what it was designed for. But the cool thing is you'll notice that the harpoon was insta-lethal against that particular target. It basically tapped it and the battle was over, just like snapping your fingers there, because it was very, very lethal against submarines. Wow. <laughs> Did you see where those explosions hit? This one ended up in the drink over here, so maybe we didn't even need to develop the harpoon missile here. Let's see the explosion miss here. Yeah, not even close. It near missed by um, 19,000 feet. Let's see here. This one near missed by 3,834 feet. So it's uh, safe to say that maybe we didn't need a harpoon for that particular purpose. But it's also really neat to see what this would look like. Enjoy.